thanks for joining Rudy and me today. We're studying the book of Romans, and yesterday we looked at Romans chapters 1, verses 16 and 17, and we're going to go back and look at some of that again, and I'm going to turn to Rudy in just one second. So, verse 16 says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God for salvation to everyone who has faith, to the Jew first and also the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed through faith, for faith, as it's written, the one who is righteous will live by faith. Rudy, you and I were talking while we were drinking our coffee about how this resonates with you, particularly that passage, the one who's righteous will live by faith. So let me turn to you. Well, as I listened back to yesterday's video and the line in the sand uh, argument that I had that even though we don't know this about God, we still have to cross it. And that basically is the beginning of understanding what faith is, mm -hmm. is doing something that God has said, even though it doesn't seem as though it could happen. Right. So I believe when Paul is writing this letter, because he quotes Habakkuk, we should really, we should look at Habakkuk because Habakkuk is an incredible example for us today. And in Habakkuk, uh, Habakkuk has a couple of complaints that he places before the Lord. And in, in, if you just, Habakkuk is a short prophet, it's only three chapters long. I had a string in it, there it is. And one of the complaints the first complaint is, how long, from Habakkuk 1-2, O oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you do not hear? Uh, or cry, there is <coughs> violence against me. This is Rudy Ross's translation. Right. And I'm not being saved. God answers him after a few more sentences. Uh, look among the nations and see one and wonder and be astounded for I'm doing a work in your day that you will not believe if I told. Now the day that Habakkuk is writing this is about 20 years uh, before the Babylonian uh, exile. And it's about 80 years after the Assyrian exile. So his complaint is and what God is telling him to look for is that nobody would have imagined Assyria ever falling because it was such a great empire. But God tells Habakkuk that the Chaldeans, which is ultimately the Babylonians, are going to, to do that. And it's, this may be like, maybe a country like Romania taking over the United States. It's that size of a, of a jump. Mm -hmm. And, uh, God goes on to tell Habakkuk how formidable their army will be. Mm -hmm. And then Habakkuk's got another complaint. Are you not from everlasting telling God, you're from everlasting? Why, basically, why am I suffering? And we could say the same thing today. Why are we suffering? Why are these wars happening around the world? Mm -hmm. uh, and the Lord, O oh Lord, you have ordained them as judgment, and, oh, and you, O oh Rock, have established them for reproof. So basically, maybe there's a sense in this that all of the earth is longing for redemption. Mm -hmm. And God basically is using particular people who may seem ultra, ultra, ultra evil to reprove other people. Mm -hmm. And I think the same thing is going on today. And, and it's because God has said this was going to happen that we have to look, f not look forward to it, but, it, but not looking forward to it emotionally, but look forward to it occurring because he said it was going to. Uh, and he said, and this is an interesting part of, of what Habakkuk is saying, and I believe what Paul is trying to get us to understand, Habakkuk says, you who are pure of eyes, then to see evil. And this, this has led to some ideologies saying that God can't look at evil. And I really believe that 
everybody is, is being willful against God most of the time. And the thing is, what he is, he's not looking at, at what you're willfully doing. He's looking at the beauty of his creation that is in you that hasn't been changed yet. Okay, Good. so it's not him not looking on evil. He's just looking past it. Uh, you who are pure of eyes, of purer eyes than to see evil and cannot look at wrong, why do you idly look at traitors? Okay, and this is basically what I had just been talking about. And then, then Habakkuk finally says, I will stand, take my stand at my post and station myself on the tower and look out to see what he will do, what he will say to me. So basically, we're to look at the situation and wonder what we're supposed to do into it and God will speak into it. And even Habakkuk believes in what I will answer concerning my complaints and what you will answer me. And the Lord says, write the vision uh, because there's still an appointed time. And to look into these leaders, mm -hmm. their souls are puffed up. Uh, we definitely can look into some puffed up people. And around the world. Around the world. Yeah. Uh, his greed is as wide as she holds. He gathers for himself all nations and collects as his own people. This mm -hmm. is the this basically is talking about the Chaldeans, but it could be talking about the tyrants of today. It's talking about the tyrants <coughs> of today too. Uh, and basically God answers, Woe to him who heaps up what is not his own. And there's some other words in there. Woe to him who gets evil gain for his house to set up his nest on high. Mm -hmm. uh, for the stone will cry out from the wall and the beam from the wood response. So I think this is a reference to the stone will cry out. The stones will cry out and really because Jesus is seen as the rock and the cornerstone and in the small image the, the Dead Sea Scrolls were the rocks crying out as well. Uh, and these are these are images, some of these images are what Paul is speaking to about Rome in his letter to the Romans. And the way Christians are supposed to handle themselves even when the outside of everything looks the way that it does. It looks impossible. And finally God says to him, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the God, of glory of the Lord, as the water covers the sea. Woe to him and makes his neighbors drink. Uh, basically drink from, your, from this cup of wrath that they're holding in their own hands. And then finally, woe to him it says to a wooden thing, awake to a silent stone, arise, can this teach? And basically, what are our idols in the world? And ultimately, the only repository of universal truth is God. Mm -hmm. And we have to wonder where our truth lies. And that's, and that's a statement about, are we standing on his rock? Mm -hmm. And then Habakkuk is given this incredible vision of God coming to rescue all of his people and he's this glorious person. His brightness was like the light of, his brightness was like the light. Mm -hmm. Rays flashed from his hands and we've talked about the only stars in heaven being the holes in his hand and I believe that the light flashing from his hands is from the risen savior from his face going mm -hmm. through the holes. and then it goes on but it also talks about the Lord having these arrows and that's a that's a reference back to Isaiah 49 and I realize that I'm jumping all over but I, I don't know that there's another way to understand Paul without understanding the basis for what he says because if you were to look at a concordance and read Paul 
and read all the places that Paul is quoting mm -hmm. from, it take you a long time to get through a chapter. Right. But in Isaiah 49, 2, listen to me, O coastlines, and give attention, you people from afar away. The Lord called me from the womb, from the body of my mother. He is he named he named my name. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand he hid me. Mm -hmm. So basically, I believe in the shadow of God's the Father's hand, mm -hmm. he hid the glory of Jesus so that we could look upon him. Mm -hmm. I mean it says that Jesus laid down his glory, but I believe that the Father was part of that. Mm -hmm. You know, I that might be a little far out. <clears throat> and he said to me, you are my servant Israel in whom I shall be glorified. And basically he talks about it, he is a chosen arrow. Because these arrows that come from the one that is, and from Habakkuk, are the, are the ones that are piercing the enemies. Mm -hmm. And basically Isaiah sees him as this arrow. And so, where do we get back to the just to live by faith, or the righteous will live by faith? Well, that comes exactly from Habakkuk, because God says that to Habakkuk. Right. And how does that fit with what we've been talking about? Well, it fits with what we're talking about because it doesn't look like God can save us or will save us. Right. Uh, but he, but he promised that he would. So the, the just will live by faith. You don't go out and try to necessarily fix what the problems are without hearing from me first. Mm -hmm. right. And that's the just will live by faith. Gotcha. And yeah. God's the one that says that. It's not something that, a, that an individual said. And the interesting thing is this is said 600 years before we understand that Jesus is the completion of the law. Very good. Thing. And really to live by faith without, you know, because part of the conversation going on with Paul and Rome is like, how much of the law are we supposed to keep? Are we supposed to get circumcised? And, you know, if you go to Galatians 3 and begin to read in Galatians 3, the same argument is built mm -hmm. in Galatians 3 right. that that basically Paul is making so quickly right. in Romans. But yeah, Galatians ten Galatians is ten years old already. Yeah. Okay. We need to pray. We're way over time. Okay. Father, uh, I pray that you arrange this the way that you always wanted it. Mm -hmm. Lord, I uh, gave some highlights. They weren't they weren't all of but help us to understand Paul better this way, Father. Mm -hmm. uh, just pray that in Jesus' name. Hey, Amen. Rudy, thank you. Uh, one of the things I appreciate about you is you draw us into the whole picture, not just segments. That's good. Thank you. Hey, we'll see you all tomorrow. Have a great day.